from the beginning to his birth. Carefully read the word of God. We will see Jesus all the way in the book of Genesis. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Happy holidays to all of you guys. So today we're going to be starting our Life of Christ series. This is going to be the first four episodes in the series. These first four episodes, we're going to be discussing uh, the life of Christ from the beginning to his birth. So I know that sounds a little bit weird, but yes, from the beginning to his birth. So I know a lot of you guys, when you think of the life of Christ, you literally think of it starting or beginning at his birth. However, carefully read the word of God, we will see Jesus all the way in the book of Genesis. So let's start all the way from the beginning. Story. So in the, book the Bible is a complete story. Although we divide it into sections, into chapters, and into books, the Bible itself is one complete story. It is a love story, a story of redemption and salvation. It is a story of us and our maker and the ups and downs of our relationship with him, and how through it all, his one and only desire is to bring us back to him, to bring us back to that fellowship and that innocence and that place that we had with him in the garden of, as we go through the life of Christ series, and as we go through more of the Bible doctrine and different teachings in the word of God, you will see salvation from the beginning to the end. So in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 it says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now if we drop down a few verses to verse 26 and 27 it said and God said let us make man in our image and what does it say? God created man in his image. In the image of God he created them male and female. Amen. Adam and Eve are created and put to live in the garden of Eden where the word of God says that they were put there to tend the garden, to take care of the garden. So Adam and God had fellowship, a very close fellowship. We'll see that God would come walking in the garden in the cool of the day to spend time in fellowship with Adam. Now of all the things that the Lord had blessed Adam and Eve with and put at their disposal, there was one tree in particular, and we all know that tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God said, you can have every other tree, every other thing in the garden. But if you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die. So we see in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, there is an introduction of a new character. And the description of this character is very intriguing. He is characterized as being sneaky. Not cuddly, not tall, not colorful, sneaky. So it says... The serpent, out of all God's creation, was the most subtle, the most sneaky of all the animals. And what does he do with that sneakiness, with his character? How does he use it to his advantage? Hmm. He goes and he starts talking to the woman. And he says to Eve, so, I'm paraphrasing, so what about that tree? And Eve's like, well, God said we can't touch the tree or eat the tree because then we're going to die. Now, she showed the serpent that she did not totally remember the Lord's instructions. The Lord never said that they could not touch the tree. The Lord said that they should not eat of the tree or else they would die. So that gave a foothold to the enemy. Serpent now realizes that she doesn't quite know what the Lord said. So he decides to test her even further and says, No, the Lord knows that the day you eat of that tree, you will have eyes wide open and you will be just like God. And he's basically just keeping that from you. All of a sudden, the woman's mind changes and it goes from what she thinks she knows about the word of God to now feeling like she knows nothing. She's powerless and she's been robbed of something. So what does she do? She eats the, tree, the fruit of the tree and she eats it and she gives it to Adam. He eats it. We see then that all of a sudden their eyes are opened and they realize that they're naked. They had been naked the whole time, but now their eyes were open. And that innocence, that, that part of them that overlooked the physical was now made very obvious to them. 
now they realize that they're naked and not only do they realize that they're naked but their nakedness brings a feeling of shame that's one thing about sin sin will always expose us sin will always make us to feel that we are uncovered and naked and ashamed god comes walking in the garden in the cool of the day and he's looking to spend time with adam and he can't find adam and he calls out to adam and he's like adam where are you and adam said i'm hiding god's like why would you be hiding and he's like i'm hiding because i'm naked god's like who told you you were naked did you eat of the tree that I told you not to eat from? And what does Adam do right away? He starts to pass the buck. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. The woman you gave me, she gave me the fruit and I ate it. And then the woman's like, no, 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 no. The serpent tricked me and I ate the fruit. And you'll notice when Adam is found out, Adam doesn't just apologize. No, instead he plays the blame game. Notice God does not even question the serpent. He says right away, you're cursed. You're in trouble. You should not have done this. You deceived my creation. And now because of that, you will be punished. And each one of them suffer a consequence. The Lord does not leave any of them unpunished. That's one thing about the Lord. Even in his righteous judgment, there's always mercy and grace. So in the midst of his judgments towards the man, the woman, and the serpent, there's a promise that's spoken. He says, one day a woman will give birth to a son and he will conquer you. Yes, he will suffer a mortal blow, i.e. the cross, but he will still crush your head and you will be finished. Sin, as we know it, will have been conquered. And we see that from the very beginning, even though, yes, sin had taken place, the grace and the mercy, and even more importantly, the salvation of God was put into motion. That is where we see the beginning of this huge redemption story. I pray that this video has been a blessing to you. This is only the first episode in this Life of Christ series. Please come back next week for episode two. If you do like the content on this channel, please consider subscribing, put a like on this video, share it with those that you know would like this content, and I hope to see you back next week. Take care. God bless. Remember, you're too blessed to be stressed. Bye.